All right guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about five things that you need to consider as a producer before you decide to start pursuing sync licensing. Chase Freedom. So since I started posting online on TikTok all about sync licensing and my success that I'm having so far, I've been getting a ton of questions. I do have an email list that I've started up helping as many producers as possible. So if you're not on that, make sure to click the link down below and join it. But in today's video, I wanna give like a warning to people that are considering this, but at the same time, also some motivation. So the first thing that I want you to consider, if you're looking to transition from a beat maker into sync licensing, you can't just expect to submit your beats that you have right now that you've been posting online, sending out to artists, etc., and get them accepted into music libraries. This is the biggest hurdle that I had to overcome, and it's gonna be the biggest hurdle for you most likely too, is that learning the structure for licensable tracks is totally different than what you've been doing for however long you've been doing that. And so it's gonna take a little bit of rewiring and a little bit of thinking on your part, and understanding why you have to do that structure is, is to me, the, the secret to it. So maybe you're somebody who has already taken some advice from some of the other creators out there, you've contacted libraries and you've submitted the beats that are just in the verse course, verse course structure, and you're wondering why you haven't heard anything back, this could be the reason why. Now, today I'm also filming a video showing you specifically how an editor might look at your track and hopefully you'll understand why it's so important to learn how to structure your tracks to make them licensable. And the second thing that you should consider if you're looking to make the jump from selling beats online or just getting into sync licensing in general is that this is 1 million percent not a get rich quick scheme. I know that there's creators out there, they're touting you know, the big payments, the upfront payments, the upfront sync fees, and they're making six figures a year. That's not easy to do at all because you have to consider that those opportunities, there's a lot less of them than there are getting your production music on the background, like an underscore on TV shows. So because there's a lot less of them, that also makes it a lot more competitive. And a lot of the time, the big commercial placements of stuff are also custom jobs too. So chances are they're not gonna be reaching out to some brand new composer who's not even in a music library or anything like that. So if you're going into this, you need to know that this is gonna take years as pretty much everything does when you're growing a business, whether you're trying to sell beats online or whatever you're doing, growing a YouTube channel, be patient with this and the back-end royalties will start to add up. It's literally like a compounding effect over the years, which I'm looking forward to. But you will also see some upfront sync fees. Maybe the library commissions you to make an album for them and they might pay you $50, $100 a track. Or maybe the track from your library gets placed in a sync position that actually does generate you an upfront sync fee. And number three, this is a good one, because if you're somebody that's expecting to be the cool kid and like get fame and, and grow your name and everything like that, it's not really gonna happen in this. Most of the times you actually have to go and add your name on IMDB because you just don't get credited in the credits for the TV shows. Nine times out of 10, it's showing the music library that was used, which is where your music is housed. So it's kind of up to you as a professional to make your name known in the circles that it needs to be known in with the music supervisors and the music libraries. And in that sense, it's really more a professional type of thing. Like you can utilize LinkedIn for this, but also your social media presence can be something that you do yourself to keep yourself proud and, you know, make notes of your placements and share it with people that are interested in it. As a side note though, if you are somebody who's an artist and you're looking to be pitching songs, then you might get some more notoriety out of it because you might have a song blow up because it gets added to a playlist and like maybe it's featured in an episode of Power and that might be a way that you get noticed. And to piggyback on that artist comment, number four, if you're expecting to be this virtuoso or super artistic production music composer, nobody really cares. What they want is music that is licensable, it serves its purpose, and a library and an editor or supervisor can hear it and know specifically where they want to use it. So that just makes it a little bit tougher to land something that's outside of the box. But with that being said, there are tons of music libraries and there are boutique music libraries that want something that's just a little bit different. Maybe they want a specific instrument heard or maybe they want something that has off timing, like they might specialize in that kind of thing. So there is room everywhere. It's just the amount of placements and, and probability of placements that you see from it might vary. 
And number five, this is a big one, especially if you're somebody who's coming from beat selling and jumping into sync licensing, you really have to have professionalism. You need to have proper email etiquette. You need to know how to communicate with people that are in the entertainment business, because that's really what this is. A lot of the people that are in this area, they don't often refer to this as actually being in the music industry. They say that it's in the ent entertainment industry because that's what you're serving. Your music is serving the video, the film. So you wanna make sure that you have proper grammar and spelling, like very succinct sentences. You're not really using any slang. You have a professional email, you have a professional appearance. There are some people that use their producer names, but that might just be when they get entered into the catalog. Chances are you're gonna be contacting the libraries using your real name. And because I know that, you know, coming from the beat selling side of things, it, you're a lot more loose with the way you're talking to people because that's just the culture around it. And it's fine, it works actually helps you but the professionalism would even go so far as to say don't email your library contacts on the weekend or, or at night i know that might change based on the location of where you are versus the library but think of it more as an office hours type of thing so i hope you understand where i'm coming from here these aren't meant to deter anybody from it this is this is merely supposed to be like an educational thing so you understand a little bit more about what you're getting into and just how to flip the switch in your head about how everything works in compared to something like selling beats online now i'm I'm going to be addressing a lot more frequently asked questions both on youtube and on TikTok, and of course even more in my email list so like i said make sure to get on that get your free starter guide because i really want to help a lot of people sift through the mist because it seems like a lot of people think about gatekeeping and there's a lot of misunderstood stuff that goes on in the sync licensing community so if you have any more questions make sure to drop them in the comments and stay tuned for the video where I'm showing you a breakdown of why a track needs to be structured a certain way. And if you haven't seen my videos about taxi music, it might be the right move for you if you're somebody who's looking to save time and save a lot of the legwork. So make sure to check that out on the screen here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.